right, welcome back. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't already, hit that like button and subscribe. That way you can keep coming back over and over to hang with us and our wonderfully talented and creative guests in the arts and entertainment world. When you're done with the show today, head on over to our other social media sites. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Like us and follow us there. We're constantly updating and posting new events that we're going to be at, new and exciting things that our guests are doing. Um, and right now we are at the Embassy Suites in Syracuse, New York, and we're at the Intuitive Expose, hosted by Pam Denton, and we're hanging with author Laura Ponticello. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. This is Laura's book. So tell us about your book. Give us kind of like a book blurb. Well, the Entrepreneurial Compass is really accumulation of my 20 years of coaching experience and life experience. And really what it does is it encourages people to kind of hit pause, reset, because life can be so hectic, especially mm. if you think about it running a business. You're tasked with doing so many multiple things. So the first thing is the more in balance we are, the more we can operate our businesses from a space of clarity. The second thing is we need to have fun at work and create joy, right? Yes, we forget to absolutely. do that yes. so much. So there's stories that are weaved in there to encourage you to not only run your business from a centered perspective, but to really operate from a place of clarity, joy, and who doesn't love prosperity, <laughs> right? Everybody loves it. So that's <laughs> also woven in there. Very good. So tell us about your literary pilgrimages. How long, um, a, a, is this your first book or? No, you this have is many? my fourth book. Fourth. So how, let's talk about your first book. How long did it take you to write that book? Well, um, as a new you know, writing is such an interesting career because I think you can approach writing all different ways. I teach creative workshops to all different writers and there's really two different approaches. One, you could just sit down very methodically and say, I'm gonna allocate these number of hours to write. Or you could go with when you're inspired to write. So my first book was a com uh, really a combination of seven years worth of journal entries. And that was a lot of material. So I consolidated that into a shorter book that could be opened at any point in time. And it was a journey with that book because I think as you evolve as a writer, your writing gets stronger, mm -hmm. you get more familiar, you see the world with a different set of eyes. Yes. Was it challenging to get published the first time? for you? You know, I had um, been published by uh, leadership um, articles and magazines. So for me, the concept of being published, um, I have my own publishing imprint. Mm -hmm. So I've had that for about seven years. And part of that was, is I just wanted to give a voice to not only myself, but other people's stories. So that's Divine Phoenix books. And they're all stories of transformation. Okay, now that's going to be my next question. Do you, um, what kind of genre do you like to publish? Do you look at that? I do, definitely. We're definitely inspiration, self-help. It's really stories about someone overcoming something in their life, so memoirs would be the other category. And it's been awesome. We have so many award-winning authors. But for me, you know, if you think about it, like what do you love to read? What do people love to read? Like, yeah. So many awesome genres out there, and then this is very super exciting because I'm <laughs> announcing this and telling the universe I'm crossing over to become a novelist. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna need about 18 months to write my novel, and really, it's about a woman's journey to step into the truth of who she is and to really encourage people to not only find self-love, but to experience all different aspects of life to get there. The trials and tribulations, betrayal, wow. joy, dismantling, and then elevating yourself and always coming back to the heart of who you are. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a good book. <laughs> So my next question is, um, since you do um, teach creative writing, do you find that writing exhausts you or energizes you? Oh, totally energizes me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm a creative being. Who wouldn't be energized by writing? Why would I be teaching people if I'm not energized? Exactly, right? I freaking love writing. 
Wow. And I love teaching people, but here, here's what I found is there's a vulnerability. And I think this is important to talk about. Mm -hmm. Writers are very vulnerable because you go through this phase of, is anybody going to like my work? Have what I, you know, written, is anyone going to read it? And the biggest piece of advice that I would offer is write for yourself first, okay? I know in fiction it's a little bit different. Right. And, and you know, young adult. But you can't write for your audience all the time. Or you're going to be not writing from a place of vulnerability. When you write from an emotional space, your reader's going to connect a lot more with your book. That is very good advice. Um, do you have any rituals, any quirky rituals that you do before you start writing? Oh, I totally do. <laughs> if you think about it, most writers do. Um, well, one of the things I do is I center myself. So I usually meditate or do a yoga practice. And then I like to have like a crystal near me or use an essential oil to kind of help me get in the zone. Oh. That's interesting. Um, do you read book re your book reviews? Absolutely. <laughs> How do you feel about the good and the bad? Well, first off, you have to kind of have a tough skin to evolve as yeah, a writer. That's... And remember, um, you know, we all come from different walks of life, so we're going to all be, you know, how do I say this? Different things are going to appeal to us, so we can't get our feelings hurt, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're out there to be liked, you're probably in the wrong <laughs> career field, right? So what I'm looking to do, like with my novel, is stir up huge emotion. So even if you hate it, I've done my job. Exactly. That's a good way to look at it. And don't take it personal, right? Right. And, and that's very hard for writers because yeah. they, writers are an obsessive group of people. We obsess, we re-edit our work, and mm -hmm. yeah. What's the most difficult um, part of the creative process for you? For me, it's not idea creation. Ideas come, it's being diligent and carving out the time, you know, because we get pulled in a lot of different directions, yeah. especially with me running the publishing company. I'm also a publicist. So it's, you've got to kind of create a writing schedule for yourself. But when inspiration hits, you have to pick up the pen or get on your computer and start writing. Don't park it. Uh, do you believe in writer's block? You know, I've, I've had clients who have had places in their writing where they're not sure where they're going to take the character, okay? And so the character the character can go in a couple different directions. Yes, I think writer's block exists, but I also think the more fluidity we have in our body, so like movement helps. Get up and move. Get out in nature. For me, essential oils, meditative practices help. I've been very, very blessed I've not had writer's block. Do you, when you're starting, like you're starting your novel, do you have um, already where you want the book to go to and then find that it's... Well, this is going to be a, a new process for me, so I started just writing. Then I stopped because I had all these other things I had to do, and I learned something from that. I shouldn't have stopped. The inspiration was coming, uh -huh. so I kind of blocked my own creative process. So what I what I do have is a framework for the character, what she's ex I want her to experience, but I don't know the ending. No. Okay. okay. I don't know. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I haven't evolved the character enough to know where she's going. Okay. Very good. And uh, where can people find you and your books? Well, um, you can find me on lauraponicello.com. I'm also on social media, Twitter, Facebook. The publishing company is divinephoenixbooks.com. All of our books are also on Audible, iTunes. And I've just been so honored to be here. I totally <laughs> love your show and thank the energy. You. And I love creativity. Oh, thank you. You guys are the best. Oh, thank that's you. That's so sweet. That's what, why we do what we do. Carrie, do we have time for a game? Because we like to play games oh, on this fun. show. I'm the game girl, they say. Fun, fun, fun. I'm going to play with you. Harry said play Mad Gab. Okay. So I've we're going to play this game before. Mad Gab. Mad Gab is 
kind of fun because you're not really talking English. Oh, interesting. <laughs> the, uh, the syllables are all mixed up, so we have to guess what we're trying to say. Oh boy, I feel a little stressed by this. <laughs> Just pick any Just card? Just pick any card, I want and there's a bubble. You can pick okay. the bubble that you want to do, and then the um, answer is on the opposite side of the card under A or B. God, I, I feel like I'm in school. Like, you have to spell this out. <laughs> I know. You go first, Okay, <laughs> I'll go first, and <clears throat> let's see if I can get it. Dawn May Cub Egged Hello Fit. Dawn May Cub Egged Hello Fit. <laughs> what does it mean? So you have to guess what the act, what I'm trying to say. Oh boy. In English. <laughs> after speaking all morning. Good luck with this. Okay, can we hit a replay? Can yes, you say that can. again? Ready? Dawn May Cub egged Hello Fit. Well, in my literary mind, I'm going to make this up into a story. So Dawn, she's pretty amazing. She decided she was going to fry an egg and then she was going to flip it over to get more information. That was pretty good. It's don't make a big deal of it. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's see if you're the master at okay. this. Crown doggy hay. Crown doggy hay. Don't crown, crown doggy hay. I don't know. Oh, that's a hard one. And the answer's on the back? It's on the back underneath the um, letter. So you are going to flip it over, and it's up here. Oh, wow. Groundhog <laughs> Day. Groundhog oh, Day. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, let's look at now it like this. Now we know. You want to play one more time? Yes. <laughs> now we know how to it's play. It's Groundhog. Well, it's way past a sign Crown. of spring. That makes sense. Yes. Crown. Maybe need to stay grounded. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> well, One you're really time. challenging me. We, I'm not thinking I can master this game. Yes. <laughs> we can. I've only gotten a couple right. Let's see. Okay. Column heating. Column heating. Call them heating. Call them heating. Column I, heating. You're almost there. Call Heating. Call on heat. Call on heating. Call on. Did you say today was Cinco de Mayo Day? <laughs> it Let's is. just say there's a lot of heat going on in the room and leave it at that. <laughs> Call a meeting. Call a meeting. Oh, I was totally <laughs> off. So close. No, you're being kind. <laughs> All right. Let's see if you can get this. These are. This is a hard they game. They are hard. Sheet. Earn. Ditto. Fur. She earned, she earned my fern. <laughs> You're, okay, she turned it over. <laughs> well, you were good with the she. I'm not even sure how that relates. Okay, we're done with this game. We're done, now. we're done. <laughs> this was hard. Well, guys, it's been so much fun hanging with Laura today. I am Allison Murray, but before we go, we'd like to give a very special thank you to our partners, Krypton Radio out of LA, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with Yvonne Mason, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services with Heather Reed, Embellish FX out of Orlando, Florida, Celestial Healings out of Liverpool, New York. Uh, without these guys, we couldn't do what we do. These are the folks that share our videos all over the World Wide Web, and we hope you will too. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think of today's show and our guest. You can also check our guest links below. Remember to subscribe, log on, and stay tuned to see who we're hanging with next. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. That was beautiful. <laughs>